Hello folks and friends and welcome back to my channel. Today we'll be working on this glorious pink poodle and I'll transform her into Princess Small Lady Serenity. You saw her coming, I teased her and there she is. So I decided to go back on my word and show you a bit more about the hair process and all. As you can see here, I rerouted re her with strands of 100% acrylic yarn very strategically. Yarn is very thick and you need less, so if you go for a permanent style, you can get away with only doing what you really need. As you can see, I've sectioned the hair already, and the reason I'm doing that is that I find it easier to separate important pieces, like along the part line, when yarn is still in that state. It also helps me with brushing, so I can go section by section, tie it up, and do things in a very organized way. So of course, this girl's gonna have twin tails. So for that in mind, I rerouted the perimeter and then the part line and I extended it all the way to the back. And then I've created an extra row of plugs at the front because she has bangs. And trust me, that's quite enough yarn. If rerouted is something you don't especially like or if you find it to be way too long, being strategic is definitely something you can try. Me? I just prefer rerouted hair and I find it easier to work with yarn overall, so here. And that's how she looks like after a first pass with the brush and the flat iron. Not quite perfect, but good enough for now. I always do the face before styling the hair, because putting the hair away to protect it would ruin the styling, but I still place it in a manageable way. I still reroute and brush the hair first, because any strain on the head could potentially damage or crack the face up. I know it's a question that is often asked on doll groups, so here's the answer. Definitely reroute first, it's way safer. Now for the face up, the good part. So, <laughs> so to make Small Lady or Chibiusa or Rini, depending on which version you're familiar with, um, I actually went in and picked a Draculaura Monster Idol, which is the same base I used to make Serenity almost exactly a year ago. It's been a year. It's been a year, folks. So um, <laughs> I picked Draculaura, and yes, this is a regular size body, uh, making her fully grown, not tiny. I'm actually putting a lot of inspiration from her darker self, a black lady for that one. So uh, this series is meant to be gothic romantic, so I'm definitely going for it. So like usual folks, before starting to work on her face, I've primed her off camera with three layers of Mr. Super Clear Sealant, then I lightly sketched her face. I am using soft pastels to start blushing and shading, giving dimension, a bit like you would do with contouring and makeup. If you are interested about which product exactly I am using, I've listed them all in the description box below. One thing that I love doing, and I think it's becoming part of my style, is giving slight variations in the skin tone. I usually like to add some slight cooler tones around the temples and sometimes on the inside of the eyes, and a pop of warmth in the middle of the face. I'm still experimenting with that, but it's going somewhere and I like it. I've also started to take my time doing some things I usually would not think too much about. Like here, I'm sculpting the, the shape of the lips. Usually I would follow the mold, not think too much about it, but I've recently started to really just take my time. Another thing I'm not super good at, but I want to practice, is dark smoky eyes. I always feel like that when I'm trying to do it, it, it's a bit muddy, not quite there, not quite blended the way I want it, so I'm really taking my time with her here and I'm really careful about where I place the pigment and in which direction I blend it and also, and most especially, how much I blend it. Pastel is not quite like eyeshadow, but I'm trying to follow the same principle as I would if I were using makeup. So here you see me sketching the eyebrows with pastels. I feel like it gives me a bit more control that way, and it creates a really soft base that I can gradually work on. It's also way easier to shape them with a kneading eraser when it's powdered and when it's pencil, to be honest. Now on to the pencil work. I think I was on layer 3 here. Don't forget to seal in between layers with a fresh coat of MSC. I'm using a more red color in the waterline, 
and a bit of a more brown color for the eye shape and all these crease lines. I am keeping my pencil super sharp at all times with the help of a, an artist's knife that I keep on the side. I also like drawing the crease of the mouth and define the nose a little bit with the pencil with a color that is in the same family as the skin tone of the doll. So here I'm using that same brown I used to do uh, the contour of the eyes and the crease lines. It's actually a bit red, but it's not as much of a red as the other pencil I used around the lips and on the waterline. And of course, I want her eyes to be smoky and her cheeks to be bright, so I'm packing more and more pigment with the pastels as I go. You will recognize here, this is one of my best friends, the white pastel pencil. I use it in the eye whites to start building the opacity of that and also in the irises to give me a good bright base for the eye color that's coming on another layer. And something that I've started doing that I love is adding an archer eye light under the eyes here with the white pastels and then I blend it out. I bit it up a little on a few layers and I really love the effect. Of course, Chibi Yusa's eyes are pinkish red, so I'm going for that. And now I just realized that it makes her face a bit monochromatic, but honestly, I love that kind of color story, so I'm living my best life. And of course, a face-up is a work done in layers, the opacity and intensity builds gradually, so it's really about going back on basically every spot and every detail to intensify, precise its shape, shading it in, and even ever so slightly, even the tiniest lines. So really at this stage, since everything is mapped out, it becomes a bit more chaotic. But you really, you really need to, to keep going to push out a little bit and make it just the way you want it to be. Each time you want to save your progress or if the pigment seems to want to stop building up, you add a fresh layer of sealant and once it's dry, you keep going. So I focus on darkening the darkest parts, adding more intense highlights, and I keep the very unforgiven pigments, like black, to the very end. Also, as a side note, since more MSC you have, the better the texture seems to be, you can also wait a bit to add a bit of texture in places like the eyebrows or the lips. I don't think it shows, but I skipped over the footage of what I think was two layers of just working on details and intensity. The lashes are done at the very end.
And of course I decided to give her shine, so I added micro glitter to her face. Now after sealing it again, I am switching to acrylic paints. I use a very tiny nail hard brush and I water down my paint quite a bit before adding in the small details, a bit of texture and the catch lights. I really feel this makes the doll come alive. Then I do the exact same with black, focusing this time on the lash line and the lashes themselves. And after a proper last sealing with two additional layers, I take my Liquitex Eye Gloss Varnish to the lips. I give it several coats for extra shine. Now we're going back to her hair. That's the ball of fluff that I got off my brush after I processed what's on her head. I'm going to use bits of that to form the buns on her head. I very crudely shape them with sewing thread, and then I'm going to cover the buns with bits of brushed and iron yarn that I actually cut from her bangs. And I'm gonna use the ever trustworthy Elmer's glue to do that. And these are done. I had inserted some pins inside too, just to be able to place them and anchor them well to the doll's head. Now to put them in place, I first pushed a piece of hair to the side out of the way, reserving it to wrap around the base of the bun. Then I used pliers to push the needle in, just to minimize the risk of squishing the face. Then to make sure it would not move, instead of adding more glue, I coated the base with heavy duty air gel. It should be strong enough. We talked about the bangs earlier and here they are, sticking straight from the head. To tame these, I'm going to coat them in hair gel and then I will wrap a piece of kitchen plastic around them and keep them like that overnight. This should do the trick. While this is setting, I decided I wanted to do like I did with Serenity and extend those twin tails to other lengths. For this purpose, I processed more yarn and this time I glued them to make wefts. The plan is to roll these and glue them inside the twin tails to act as extensions. I made four, two for each side, and I hot glued them in place. I also took the time to make sure both sides were equally as thick, so I made the extension thickness with that in mind. You see here I am separating the hair before setting the extension is. It's to make sure that the extension is camouflaged from all directions. Mm -hmm. 
that length will do. I am satisfied. I did add some curls off camera. I used the metal chopsticks method. Like I did with her mother, I decided I was going to add roses and pearls to her hair. This time, I settled on red roses and I had the idea of adding black pearls. For that, I used this glue that I have since forever and I don't remember buying it, but it's actually super super strong. No foreshadowing here. To make it easier to film this part, I removed the stick in her head. Then I used the silicone tool to apply the glue, because I don't trust myself with brushes. I've ruined way too many for not cleaning them to roughly enough. This is the moment I should have reconsidered my life choices. Because I really thought adding black pearls just about everywhere I could was an amazing idea. And no, it was not. I told you that glue was super strong, right? These, once dry, they don't come off. They don't go anywhere. And not without taking the hair with them. I should really have taken my inability to pick them up nicely as a sign from the universe that this... this was a terrible idea. On the buns too, yay, look at that! To quote my girlfriend, she looks like a strawberry. And I absolutely hate it. But yeah, it's permanently there, so what options do I have? The hell with it, I just painted everything, making the pearls pink and the roses black. It's not the best, but it's alright. Crisis averted, let's go to her garment. I really, really, really love that embroidered tool, so I decided I was going to use it. So first thing I did was to make a pattern for a form-fitting dress. I covered her body with kitchen plastic and masking tape. Then I drew on the seam lines and I cut it off the doll. It's a perfect fit! Don't forget though to add the seam allowance when you're about to use it. The tool is see-through, so I decided I was going to place it on a layer of black, so I took fabric from an old pair of leggings. Once done, I tested the fit, and it looks quite good. I can now add the second layer. So you might notice that the tool here is actually too long for the doll, but the design is so intricate I did not want it to cut into it, so I decided to take another clue from Black Lady and add a slit. I'll just accept that it will fall on the ground next to her feet. Once ready, and then perfected, all I needed to do was to add a snap in the back and close the back of the dress. As for her gloves, because all the dolls in this collection will have some, I decided to use cut-off pieces from the tool I used for the dress. Once that was in place, I added some of the same lace I used on the other dolls. I did not connect to the two parts though, because I didn't want it to enter the joint at her wrists. Mm -hmm. 
lovely. Now our shoes. I am using 3D printed resin shoes that I received from Lady Dynamite Creates, another amazing artist here on YouTube. I'll link her things in the description box below. So yeah, these are intricate and perfect. I painted them black, then added a row of tiny soft pink gems just to give it some pizzazz. In the end, I painted the soles pink and I added a small golden mood from a set of Nailhog jewels that I have. We are nearly done. The last thing I need to do was to blush the body, which I should have done before making the gloves and the contraptions on her arms. I used the same pastel shades I used on her face. To prefer the body though, I gave it a good sanding with fine grit sandpaper to remove the shiny top coat, then I primed it with two coats of MSC. Of course, I had to give her some micro glitter too. Then because I am upland and own everything, I am moving on to chunkier glitter. I applied it with Mod Podge, just on her shoulders and of course on her legs since it will be exposed. Can you believe I once said I don't like pink much? That was a lie. I lied to myself. I am living for these shades. So now, I can put her together. And yes, pearls were added to the dress, but a nice color this time. Are you ready to see the finished doll? I'm always super excited to see her complete for the first time, so here we go! So what do you think of her? Let me know in the comments below. The next doll will be either Pluto, Uranus, Neptune or Saturn. Let me know which you want to see first in the comments below. In the meantime, stay safe. Congrats Dolly Mixtures! The video of the draw is on my Instagram.